Blizzard Beach is one of two water parks currently at Walt Disney World. When this opened back in the 1990s, it was probably the world's best water park, but it hasn't gotten anything new ever since it opened. That's pretty much unheard of for any water park, especially one of this scale. Is this park still worth visiting? Find out in this review. Blizzard Beach was actually the third water park to be built at Walt Disney World. River Country opened back in 1976 as the country's first themed water park. It was small, but it attracted a good crowd and would often hit capacity. So Disney built a second and far larger water park in 1989 named Typhoon Lagoon. This one was themed to a tropical island ravaged by a storm. And this park is beautiful. It has lush landscaping and the stunning Mount Mayday as a centerpiece. And it has some standout attractions too like the surf pool with ginormous waves and the crush and gusher water coaster. All this is why I think it's one of the country's best water parks. But Disney was not done. In 1995, they built their third and final water park in Blizzard Beach. This water park would be bigger and bolder than Typhoon Lagoon. With two full-size water parks in their portfolio, River Country is permanently closed just a few years later. Like Typhoon Lagoon, Blizzard Beach is a full backstory. The park's premise was that a freak snowstorm hit Florida, and businessmen rushed to build a ski resort. But warm weather quickly returned, melting the snow in the ski jumps and toboggan runs. The resort was ready to cut their losses until they saw Ice Gator, the park's mascot, sliding down the hill with delight. This gave them the idea to convert the ski resort into a water park. And it definitely has the vibe of a ski resort. The buildings at the front of the park are designed to look like lodges. Then you have Mount Gushmore. This is a nine-story tall man-made mountain at the center of the park. It is covered in fake snow, all sorts of snow machines, a fully functioning chairlift, and multiple slides. And at the apex, you have the iconic Summit Plummet. This open is America's tallest water slide, and it's absolute eye candy. Riders disappear down a ski jump and blast out the bottom of the mountain. The snow theme is very unique for a water park, and Disney goes all in with it. Pun intended, this park is such a cool atmosphere, and it's only enhanced by the super friendly employees you'll find around every corner. Blizzard Beach is located on the south side of the resort. If you have a car, the park is super accessible. There's a large parking lot adjacent to the main entrance, and unlike the theme parks, Parking is free. Now this park can be a bit annoying to get to if you're using the Walt Disney World bus system though. In general, I love this system. You can easily get between most parks and hotels. The water parks are the one exception. Most parks and resorts do not have a dedicated bus to Blizzard Beach. The only hotels that do are the ones within a one mile radius like Coronado Springs and All Stars. Everyone else will need to take a bus to Animal Kingdom. You then need to wait for a second bus that goes to Blizzard Beach. Disney cites demand as the reason why they do this, but I suspect it's to prevent people from parking for free at Blizzard Beach and immediately hopping to a park that has a parking fee. As of this recording, day tickets cost $74. This is pricier than most water parks, but it is cheaper than the main theme parks. However, I think the best value is when you add the Park Hopper Plus option to a multi-day ticket. This costs a bit less than a single day ticket to Blizzard Beach, and you get to enter the resort's water parks and golf courses multiple times. You get as many visits equal to the days in your ticket. This includes the resort's two highly themed mini golf courses, one of which in Winter Summerland is located directly next to Blizzard Beach as entrance, so it's quite easy to walk between the two in the same day. Unfortunately, it is nearly impossible to do both Blizzard Beach and Typhoon Lagoon in the same trip nowadays, unless you get lucky. For the past few years, Disney has only kept one water park open at a time. I hope both parks open simultaneously again in the future during peak periods, but I'm not optimistic this will happen. Typhoon Lagoon has typically been open from March to November. When that park closes, Blizzard Beach opens. And it makes sense why the park with the snow theme is open in the winter. But don't worry, you will not be too cold here. Florida's winters are much milder than other parts of the country. The daily high still hits the mid to high 70s most days, and almost all the water in the park is heated as well. The only exceptions are the melting snow effects in the Lazy River, which are comically cold for thematic purposes. 
If there is unseasonably cold days, Disney will close Blizzard Beach. This tends to happen if the max temperature doesn't get above 60 degrees. The Disney water parks don't get too busy even in the summer months, but Blizzard Beach almost always has light crowds in the winter months. While most guests try to hit all four theme parks in a visit to Walt Disney World, not everyone is trying to visit the water parks, especially in the cooler months. I've never had to wait more than 10 to 15 minutes for anything at this park, and usually things are walk-ons. This is a combination of crowds and fast dispatches, so you don't really need a specific touring plan to experience everything here. I should talk about this park's setup though. Understanding the park layout can give you a much more relaxing day. As I mentioned at the start, Mount Gushmore is at the center of the park. Most slides start atop the hill. You have three different clusters. You have the green slope at the highest point with the speed slides and team boat springs. You have the purple slope off to the left with the racing slides. Then you have the red slope on the back side with a trio of tube slides. You have multiple ramps and staircases to reach these slides. Then there are pathways at the top between the different slopes, but they're not clearly marked. Alternatively, you can take the chairlift atop the hill. The latter does tend to take a little longer though because it moves slowly, only boards in one spot, and usually is a small weight, but it will allow you to save your energy, and it offers some cool views of Summit Plummet. Then the Cross Country Creek Lazy River circles around the perimeter of the park. There are multiple entrances and exits by each slide. Even if you don't want to use this attraction as a form of transportation, it is well worth checking out. You have some nicely themed bits as you pass through caves, and also underneath different sprayers. Now let's talk about the slide lineup. I believe this was the world's best water slide collection when it opened in the mid-1990s. However, the lineup has been completely stagnant ever since. Nothing new has been added. I would love to see some sort of half-pipe slide and also a water coaster added one day in the future, but there's no indication anything new is on the way. The slide lineup is fairly well balanced though, offering a mix of body, tube, and mat slides all across different thrill levels. I'll start with the green slope, which is home to the park's two most extreme slides. Summit Plum is the park's signature attraction, and as I've said in a separate review, it has a strong case as the scariest ride in all of Disney World. This is a 12-story tall speed slide taking you straight down the mountain. It is just you and the slide, and you need to push yourself over the edge. You'll feel yourself lift off the slide at the start, and then you zip down to the bottom. It is an absolute rush, and it isn't too rough on your back either. Slush Gusher is a triple down next door. The first two humps build up speed, so you can actually go airborne in the final drop. And like Summit Plummet, this is another body slide that isn't too rough. Then you also have Team Boat Springs. This is one of the longest family raft slides in the world. Most of the course is fairly gentle, but you have a few small dips that'll sneak up on you, including a double down towards the end that gives a smidge of airtime. Moving on to the purple slope, you will find three slides that'll get your competitive juices flowing. Downhill Double Dipper is a side-by-side -side tube slide, it consists of a giant double down. The slide itself has a ton of speed. Then you're shot into the water and either glide across the surface or comically wipe out. Toboggan Racers is an eight lane slide consisting of a triple down. The sensation of speed is great as you lie in your stomach and the racing element is front and center because the course is wide open. Snowstormers is a windy mat slide. It mimics a slalom course as you carve your way down the hill. There are no big drops, but a constant downhill gradient results in solid pacing, and you get pushed into a few of the turns towards the end, making it feel a bit out of control. Then the red slope features runoff rapids. There are two open tube slides that are fairly mild. They don't have much speed to begin with, but you also have these bumps before the turns that serve as trim brakes. The enclosed slide is decent though. That one has no notable dips, but a few of the turns have a nice amount of sway, especially because you cannot see them coming in the darkened environment. And one really nice thing about this park setup is that you do not need to haul mats or tubes atop any slide. You pick them up at the top of each one. This is a nice contrast from Typhoon Lagoon. The best option for kids is the Ski Patrol Training Camp. This is a large play area with a variety of attractions. There is a lily pad crossing across chunks of ice. 
Then there's a zip line that launches you into a pool down below. And there's also a small tube slide as well. Then the smallest kids also have the Tykes Peak spray ground available. Beyond the slides and aforementioned transportation rides, you also have the Meltaway Bay Wave Pool. This one is constantly pumping out decent sized waves. I like how the far end of the pool is a rocky facade. Then the entry area has a big lounge section. A lot of people throw their belongings on these lounge chairs, but I don't trust my valuables out in the open. So the park offers lockers. These are shockingly cheap compared to other water parks, as they cost just $10 to $15, depending on the size. The park also offers complimentary towels, if you're a resort guest. You pick these up at the main gift shop. You don't need to provide any ID or your room key or anything like that, just state the hotel you're staying at. If you're looking to grab a bite to eat, Blizzard Beach has a few quick service options towards the front of the park. The main one is Lottawada Lodge, but there are also some smaller stands as well. The mini donut place in particular is quite popular because you cannot get that snack elsewhere at Disney World. Outside of this place, the food is fine, but I prefer to eat elsewhere at the resort. And that ties into the next point, how much time will you need? I think Blizzard Beach can comfortably be done in a half day between the number of attractions and low crowds. I like to come here in the morning and stockpile lightning lanes for a theme park later in the night. So do I recommend Blizzard Beach? Depending on the length of your vacation, yes I do. I would definitely prioritize the theme parks, but if you're at Disney for a week, I think it's worth visiting this water park. It's a really good one. You have a unique theme and some fast paced slides, most notably Summit Plummet. Of the two Disney water parks, I do prefer Typhoon Lagoon. I think Blizzard Beach has the more thrilling slide lineup, but I think Typhoon Lagoon's attraction lineup is more complete and they have the best overall ride of the two water parks with the Crush and Gusher. So those are my thoughts on Blizzard Beach. What are your thoughts about this water park? Do you find it a wintry wonderland? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.